yearbooks have a habit of haunting politicians. This 2001 photo of Justin Trudeau in brown face is no different. Clearly rattled, the Canadian Prime Minister at pains to apologise. In 2001, uh, when I was a teacher out in Vancouver, I attended an end-of-year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights. And I uh, dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. It was something that uh, I didn't think was racist at the time, but now I recognize um, it was something racist to do, and I am deeply sorry. The scandal, fuel to the fire of Canada's election campaign. Wearing brown face is an act of open mockery and racism. It was just as racist in 2001 as it is in 2019. And what Canadians saw this evening is someone with a complete lack of judgment and integrity and someone who's not fit to govern this country. Trudeau launched his re-election bid last week, just as reports emerged that police are investigating claims he had corruption charges dropped against an engineering company. But for someone who has made political hay out of his support for multiculturalism, this could be more damaging. Well, it's troubling. I mean, it's really, it's insulting. Um, anytime we hear examples of brown face or black facing, it's really, it's, it's, it's making a mockery of someone for what they live and what their lived experiences are. Um, I think he needs to answer for it. I think he's got to answer the question why he did that. Perhaps more than the charge of racism, this image will lead to questions of authenticity and whether Justin Trudeau is indeed the poster boy of liberalism that he claims to be. For more on this, I'm joined by DW reporter Peter Dahl. So, Peter, this certainly doesn't look good for anyone, but definitely not Justin Trudeau, who is a major Western leader in the middle of a campaign. Yeah, I think that's putting it mildly, right? I mean, really, this is just the latest chapter in what appears to be a pretty dramatic uh, fall from grace for Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. Remember, just four years ago, he rode into office on, on this rainbow of optimism, right? He was being billed as a Canadian Obama. He had developed almost a cult following thanks to you know, his model good looks and viral photos of him in gravity-defying yoga poses. Mm -hmm. And it really made him the heartthrob of people around the world, you know, female and male. And for many, he was seen as the beginning of a new era in Canadian politics. He ran on a very liberal agenda, and his cabinet was the most diverse in Canadian history. Unlike many of his predecessors, he actively sought to make amends for Canada's colonial sins. And so I think all this taken together, like it's the image stands in such stark contrast to the photo that just emerged that many voters are now wondering, was all of that just an act? Absolutely. So brown and blackface has a, a long, rather derogatory history. For those who don't know, what is so offensive about it? Well, it was born out of racism. It became a centerpiece of white American popular culture in the mid to late 19th century. Actors would paint their face black and, and, you know, these big, bright red lips and perform these incredibly demeaning characters of black people, uh, painting them as basically subhuman. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination? Well, a man had me in a little room and set me down and started asking me a gang of questions. Oh. Yeah, and so this tradition continued well into the 20th century with stars like Judy Garland we see here portraying black people as, you know, feeble-minded, gullible, shucking and jiving jokes. And it really was a way to keep black people uh, in their place, make sure to show them as unfit for equal treatment. And, you know, this history has been well documented and the tradition needs to be buried. And yet we see blackface continuing to pop up here and there still today. Yeah, it really continues to, to haunt us, right? And especially in the U.S. where similar scandals have emerged uh, just in recent months or weeks even uh, with white people in power. Um, just last month, we saw the governor of Alabama, Kay Ivey, who uh, was forced to apologize after it was revealed that she had worn blackface in college. This came after Virginia Governor Ralph Northam mm. uh, was almost forced to step down um, after a photo of his, of his medical school yearbook showed him in blackface. And it's not just politicians to see right here fashionably labeled Gucci had to pull this sweater from his collection following complaints that it resembled a blackface. Yeah, isn't racism just so fashionable? So now the flip side of the argument is 
these things happened many decades ago. They were students when this happened. Is it fair to hold these politicians to account now? I absolutely think it is, especially in the case of Trudeau. He was born in the 70s. He is 47 today. He was not a product of the segregationist 50s and 60s the way, for instance, Ivy or, or, or Northam were, right? He came of age when Rodney King was beaten to a pulp in L.A. Um, he knows what racism looks like. And so when he decided to wear that brown face as a 29-year-old teacher at that, we had already entered the 21st century. To say that he didn't consider it racist at the time, it's either frankly ignorant or disingenuous, and I'm not sure which is worse. Not a, not a great excuse. Yeah. All right, Peter Dahl for us. Thank you so much. Thank you.